I don't even know what to say. I just don't know what to say. I mean, y you sit through things like newborn cuties and Mr. Pickles and Gaither's Pond. Or sometimes your fellow content creators make you sit down and have to watch something for one of their shows. Like you have to sit down and go through Pope Town or When Blackbirds Fly or a Zootopia comic about Arby's. Joshua in the Promised Land. Let's just, just, just roll the theme song. I, I don't even want to talk about it. God, my guy, I'm rolling with my ninja D. Since Christ, Satan can suck on my cock tonight. Some yellow nigga just burned my rice. God, my guy, I'm rolling with my ninja D. Since Christ, Satan can suck on my cock tonight. Some yellow I have to talk about it, so let, let's just get into it. So Joshua in the Promised Land was made by one person who was able to get it out on DVD, so I'll give him that much. And of course, because I am Chris T. Ian, the host of The Captivating Christian, I have to sit down and I have to talk about this film because it's a Christian film. Because apparently everyone likes shoving the bad religious stuff onto me because, oh, Chris, you'll probably like it because you like everything that's religious. Well, even I got limits. All right, I criticized Gaither's Pond, and now I have to criticize this. And you know, unlike people like the Blockbuster Show or uh, the Media Wiz, I can at least sit through bad-looking things as long as I personally agree with its politics or its stance on religion. But even then, this was bad. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just saying. You know, you have a problem when the quality of your film is on par with that of Zoo Race. I'm sorry. This is just so bad. Please turn this game off. What is Joshua in the Promised Land about? Well, it's about this anthropomorphic lion child who's having a bad day. His family's not really getting along, so he goes upstairs to kind of keep to himself. But then this uh, dog-like person, all throughout, he's supposed to be the kind of guardian it's angel character, kind of like what Ariel is to really... me. Who are you? Some people call me the best friend, but my real name is Christopher Andrew Eugene Bazzioni at your service. So he's like the guardian angel character. But it's okay if you don't like it. Just call me Chris. Oh, his name is Chris too. Oh, for, for, listen, Joshua. For, I came here to take you. Forget you. In time Except, time. I don't know. There's something about this fellow I just don't trust. Come on. Listen, Joshua. Sometimes a no means maybe. I'll grant you that. I don't know about you, but he comes off like one of those Hollywood celebrities who's telling you to do things. And then it turns out they have some skeletons in their closets. That, that, that's the vibe I'm getting from this fellow. On top of that, as if this wisecracking, very questionable dog, ghost, spiritual angel thing isn't just enough, we also have a purple version of that in a bow tie who serves as the narrator and he's constantly... Uh, what, what, what's the term, Ariel? Yeah, he's always doing that to address the audience. I don't know why we need a narrator, but for some reason he's there. So he looks like a deer caught in the headlights, doesn't he? And from there, most of the movie's runtime has them reenact the story of Moses and Exodus, and then Joshua and the Battle of Jericho, as you come to expect from the title, I guess. And it's all done through these terrifyingly animated anthropomorphic animals. That's the presence of God there protecting the Hebrews. No man can touch it and live. Come on! Come on! Say what you want about VeggieTales, but with VeggieTales, they have a right balance of humor for adults, and they have enough stuff that the children are going to be into, all the while getting the overall message of the story out there. I know being nice to someone who hasn't been nice to you doesn't sound like very much fun, but following God's directions is always the best idea. But with this film, it seems like it wants to be something for everyone, so they have these uh, pretty graphic uh, violent sequences. <laughs> Not as violent as something like, say, Passion of the Christ, but it, it, it almost borders on that level. I mean, you have movies that do these stories in a way better way that's appealing to 
anybody, even if they're not a religious audience. I mean, look at a movie like uh, The Prince of Egypt. That's something that a religious audience or a non-religious audience could sit down and enjoy. Here, the animation is not only not pleasant to look at, it is very Gaither's Pond and When Blackbirds Fly levels of uncanny. The level of tone that this movie is giving off, it feels like it's trying to be for everyone and yet appealing to no one. And so Joshua lives out 40 years of these stories of the story of Exodus to the knocking down the wall of Jericho, which by the way, the way that they knock it down is not only follow God's commands, but then the spiritual angel dog man thing, he comes out several times with a hammer and knocks the wall down. Josh and the big wall was more accurate to Joshua in the Battle of Jericho, and that had French peas wearing Roman helmets playing the people of Jericho using slushies as weapons. As you can see, Joshua feels kind of lost in the shuffle, and he doesn't know where to turn. That's why I think we should give him a little help. I don't know. My mom will get mad if I'm late for dinner. Hey, I promise that I will have you back in time for dinner. This is my day off. This is what I'm going to do. Well, if you would just stop spending so much time on that car of yours, I wouldn't get so upset. After 40 years of both of these stories, it finally comes to a conclusion when it pulls the, it was all a dream. Am I awake now? Not yet, kid. You know how you won all those victories for God while you were dreaming? Yeah! I, yeah. What I'm trying to say is, when you wake up, things won't be exactly the same. Hard. And Josh goes down for dinner, and all of his family apologized for being jerks earlier. Oh, I'm sorry I yelled at you, honey. It's okay. I forgive you. Darling? Yes, dear? I'm sorry I yelled at you. I'll try to spend some more time with you. With both of you. And there's also a weird thing where the evil fire demon thing that's supposed to be, I guess, the leader of Jericho, or maybe it's supposed to be the devil. I, I don't know. I was so confused because I felt like my brain was melting throughout this film. But he shows up, Josh waves like a fake sword around, and um, then it cracks in two and it dies and sizzles and turns into dust. And that stopped it. I guess that took care of that. So yes, if I were to compare this to something else that I did a Captivating Christian video or any other Chris T. Ian video on, I would easily compare this to Gaither's Pond. It has the right intentions and I really want to appreciate it for it, but it lacked any kind of sense of charm that, again, something like VeggieTales or The Prince of Egypt did when they told the stories. And also I want to say it was made by one person, so I, I really do sympathize with that. But at the same time, it, it doesn't make up for the fact that this just is not that good of a Christian film. If you want a better Christian movie, then, like I've said all throughout, go watch the VeggieTale episodes or watch The Prince of Egypt what, long, bef long before you watch this. Oh, those were my thoughts on Joshua and the Promised Land. I'm Chris T. Ian. So yes, those were my thoughts on Joshua and the Promised Land, and may Jesus be with you. No! No!